Now, what happens then uh, from the Islamic perspective uh, w when we die? Obviously, uh, in, in pre-Islamic cultures, um, the Arabians, most fascinating aspect of Arabian culture, the Arabs did not believe in an afterlife. Really interesting, because most cultures have a concept of the afterlife. The Arabs did not believe in an afterlife. They said, uh, We live and we die and nothing kills us but time. The Arabs said, and, and will we be decayed bones, dust in the earth, and brought back to life? They say, who's going to revive these dead and decayed bones? The Quran says, Qul, marra. The one who brought them to life the first time, he'll do it the second time. The Quran says, we created you the first time. The commentators say, second time around is always easier. Right? If, if it was done once, it can be done again. Now, how did the Quran uh, deal with this, uh, this belief? Because it's very interesting that the, uh, the Arabs didn't believe this. How did it deal with it? The way that it dealt with it was it told the Arabs to look at the dead earth. And it said, we take a dead earth, send down rain from the heavens. It mixes with the seeds. And we bring forth, we bring the earth back to life again. And like that, you will be brought back. Now, this analogy there is a hadith that says that the Prophet Muhammad said every human being has what's called ajb dhanab the wondrous tail and it's it's at the tip of the coccyx and it's the seed of the human being so the, the, the Muslims believe that there is a seed that every human being has. And like seeds, seeds are very interesting because they're very hard to destroy. Right? You swallow seeds, they come out the other end. Hydrochloric acid doesn't break them down. In fires, seeds stay. Right? Forests that are burnt down come back to life because of seeds that are there that aren't destroyed. Drought comes, kills everything but the seeds. When the rain comes back, it comes back to life. Now, the belief of the Muslims is that every human being has a seed, and that seed will not be destroyed. We don't know where it is or what it is. The hadith indicates that it's in the coccyx. But we don't know what size it is, what it looks like, nothing like that. But from that seed, every human being will be recreated from a divine rain. And it's interesting that we deny resurrection and yet our own culture is talking about recreating human beings from one cell. Bringing back the entire human being by cloning one cell because all of the information about you is contained in one of your cells. And this, one of the verses in the Quran is it says, we will continue to show them our signs in their selves and on the horizon until it becomes clear to them that what we're saying is true. So the belief in the resurrection is absolutely fundamental to the Islamic tradition. And there is a belief that every soul will be completely renewed. The body, but the body that's recreated is not the same as this physical body. Yeah, no, it's not reincarnation.
Now, uh, here's a, a little schematic. The, this was what we called the world of spirits. And from that we move into... Now one of the things about the world of spirits according to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, If you met people in the spiritual realm, because we actually intermingle. If you met people in the spiritual realm, you will have a natural affinity for them in this realm. So there will be people that you meet in your life that you immediately connect with. And this is believed to be a pre-worldly meeting that is replicated in this realm and there's a recognition of that. And likewise, the people most distant from you on that primordial plane will be people that you have natural, uh, you, you're not attracted to them. And this can also be within, uh, within families and within uh, religious tradition. In other words, it could be a Muslim. For a Muslim, you know, there could be Muslims you just don't feel comfortable with. And that is not seen, you, you know, you're not, you should, you're not supposed to be mean or cruel to them. You know, or take them as enemies or something. But it's recognized that there are natural affinities and these affinities are from a pre-worldly recognition. And there is a hadith in which the Prophet said, souls are like regimented ranks. Those who knew each other before feel affinity in this realm and those who did not uh, there's differences you know and it's like if you look at it for a, a metaphor here you know you have the the armed forces and they're all on the same side but when marines are at a bar drinking and then some navy boys come in right there's all this kind of aggression that, that will often happen you know because they're from different regiments. You know, they're, they're, these guys are another group. Even though it's the same army, they're another group and there's that kind of animosity that's a result of not being from that same uh, regiment. Now, this area is the world of life, choice, and effort. This is called alam dunya So you enter into this. And from here, you move into the barzakh. Now, according to the hadith, when your soul dies, it hovers above your body. And it's a very discomforting experience. And this is why uh, sleep is considered to be the little brother of death in Islam. And the Quran talks about we cause them to die and there are those we return to their bodies and others that we take, keep them. In other words, that sleep is a death. It is a type of death. One of the things, sleep is the indication of the afterlife because what happens when you go to sleep is like you live your life, you go to sleep and you enter into uh, this, this barzakh. And then waking up is like the resurrection. You come back into the body you're, and you wake up, you, you're resurrected. During sleep, you can live lives. You can have extraordinary dreams. You can feel like you were dreaming for just all these things happened. And those are indications of another world. And this is why the Muslims believe that the dream realm is a very important realm. And they differentiate between dreams. The Quran differentiates between dreams that are uh, what we would call in this culture like food dreams. You, you eat a lot of uh, food before you go to sleep and then you have all these funny garbled dreams. So there's, but you're still in that, what's called the alam al-khayal, the imaginal world. It is part of the unseen realm. But there is also true dreams. And the more one's spirituality, soul work becomes lucent, the more access they have to that realm. And the more opaque and materialistic they are, the more cut off they are from that realm. So there are people who literally their dream world is incredibly rich. There are people in our tradition, there are many people who uh, saw the Messenger of Allah every night in their dreams, like Imam Malik ibn Anas. 
He said he never uh, woke up without having seen the Prophet in his dreams. There are others that have what are called true dreams in which there's information given to them. Uh, and much of, of, of the dream realm is symbolic. And there is an extensive science of dream interpretation in Islam. Uh, several books written on it where you will see very specific things and they have very specific meanings. And this is a first century work by Ibn Sirin, which is about dream work. Uh, just very extensive. If you see this, it means this. If you see this. And there are, there are multiple interpretations. It, it doesn't always mean one. But that work is, deals with these other realms. There are also spiritual journeys that are taken in the unseen world. So people will have very profound spiritual experiences in, in their souls. Now the, the mi'raj of the messenger is believed to have been, uh, was not a dream. It was a, a journey of the soul and uh, the body. Although time expanded because he returned to his bed and it was still warm. So he went through this in, uh, entire experience. He saw many things on that journey and he described them. He went, in fact, uh, if you, Asin Palacio's work indicates that much of the divine comedy uh, is actually taken from a very famous exposition of the messenger's journey through the, the hells and through the heavens, the seven heavens. Right? until you have the beatific vision, which was, was the result of that. Now, 